Yet, strangely, this very family, which would underwrite some of the world's great art, was also one of the most evil and mysterious in history. The Borgia family has become the arch symbol of treachery, of decadence, of violence, of assassination, of carnal lust, of every manner of moral turpitude we can think of. The Borgia's reputation for depravity is nearly unparalleled in history. Pope Alexander VI, the father of several illegitimate children, said to have concocted a deadly recipe for poison, which he routinely used to silence his enemies. Juan, his evil-tempered eldest son, believed to have ordered the execution of a dinner guest over an unintended insult. Cesare, the most skillful and vicious military tactician of his day, accused of slashing the throat of his elder brother, Juan. It was in the year 1456, at the age of 25, that Alexander began his climb to power in a corrupt church by buying himself an appointment as cardinal. He was a brilliant man, extraordinarily eloquent, uh, a very clever politician, strategist, diplomat. He was a man of commanding physical presence. A vigorous man in all respects, Alexander had no intention of curbing his sexual appetite in spite of wearing the crimson robes of the church. In this, he was not unusual. On a hot August morning in the year 1492, Alexander ascended to the ultimate office of the Catholic Church. He was elected Pope. But even this did not satisfy Alexander's boundless ambition. The Italy of his day was a loose confederation of hostile city-states. Now that he was Pope, Alexander hoped to unite these warring principalities under his control. In effect, he would become the ruler of all Italy. By the year of 1497, many believed that Pope Alexander VI was defiling the sanctity of the Catholic Church. Some even claimed that he was a cold-blooded murderer who had annulled his own daughter's marriage in order to continue their sexual affair. Seemingly unconcerned by these rumors, Alexander hungered for even greater power. In order to strengthen his position, he planned a military campaign that would subdue the hostile city-states of Italy and hold an invading French army at bay. Alexander thought he knew just the man to lead this onslaught. He summoned back from Spain his eldest and favorite son, Juan Borgia. Many historians have pointed out, and Guicciardini first among them, that Cesare Borgia had a motive to kill his brother because he was jealous of him, jealous of his station, jealous of his future. The Pope, however, refused to consider that Cesare might be guilty. Perhaps he was simply unable to. At the beginning of the 16th century, the Borgia family found itself close to realizing its dream of becoming the single most powerful force in European politics. Under Cesare's direction, the papal army swept through northern Italy, conquering every town in its path. 
Of all the Borgias, it was Cesare that history would remember the most vividly. Cesare was an exceptionally violent man who gave free reign to his uh, violent impulses and impulses for revenge. Although he could not have known it and might not have cared, Cesare's ruthless cunning and political dexterity would earn him a unique immortality. The writer, Niccolo Machiavelli, adopted him as the model of how power is to be achieved, held, and used. From this arises the question whether it is better to be loved more than feared, or feared more than loved. The reply is that one ought to be both feared and loved, but as it is difficult for the two to go together, it is much safer to be feared than loved. The Prince, Niccolo Machiavelli, 1512. Then, in the summer of 1503, after attending a dinner party, Alexander and his son Cesare were overcome by a mysterious melody. For days, both hovered near death. Had they fallen victim to illness or intrigue? Cesare recovered. Alexander, a man in his early 70s, did not. The hideous appearance of his corpse gave rise to rumors of murder. It was Guicciardini who told us in great detail of what the corpse of Alexander looked like on his death in 1503, the black and swollen tongue, the body so large and bloated, he alleged from poison, that no one could stuff it into the casket without stomping on it several times. The family seemed menaced by a sinister curse, for Cesare was also to meet a violent end, hacked down on the battlefield in the year 1505. But there was to be another chapter in the Borgia legacy, perhaps the most important. Lucrezia would still be alive to witness the momentous event when in 1517, Martin Luther nailed his declaration on the door of a church in Wittenberg, Germany, and began the Protestant Reformation. Protestant Reformation, that great upheaval in religious belief, had come about in large part as a reaction against the excesses of the Borgia Pope, Alexander. We need to think of the criticisms of Alexander's papacy and his unbridled ambitions as ultimately being yet one more link in the chain that leads to Martin Luther in 1517 and to the splintering of Christianity not many years after that. The predictions of Savonarola, the monk that Alexander burned at the stake, had come true. The Catholic Church was rent apart. 500 years later, few are aware of the impact the Borgias had on the course of world events. Rather, it is the legend of Borgia infamy that persists, leaving us to puzzle over the nature of a diabolical curse that caused this family to turn against its own flesh and blood, leaving all that Alexander had schemed for and dreamed of no more than ashes.